So, good morning, everyone that's interested in this, who's, who's into your skiing technique. Um, as we wrote about yesterday, um, we were getting a lot of emails and requests in from people uh, who are still dead keen on doing something with their skiing. So, um, because of that, we, we thought we'd put on something. Um, we were going to be launching, this is something that might, people might find quite interesting, we were going to be launching um, some webinars uh, as a product in the autumn, but because of the current situation, um, and obviously Verbier being sort of on lockdown from skiing, um, we thought we'd bring that forward a little bit earlier and offer it out for free to people because um, one of the things that we, we always find, uh, and I'm sure if, you, um, if you're a super keen skier, people are so passionate about the sport that to have it sort of taken away from them, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's frustrating. So, um, so some of the things that we've been doing um, as a company, we've been working over the past few years. Uh, as some of you may have known, I know some of you that have written in and asked us to do this uh, webinar will know that we, we, we tour around the UK and around Europe uh, doing talks and the talks are generally um, to give people exercises and things to think about for their, their skiing technique. Um, some of you guys may also know we work with ISA Kinetic in London and I've been using the, the, uh, the Verbier Physio here uh, with Stephanie and we always try and make partnerships with people that help with the physiology uh, and the biomechanics of skiing. So it, it's kind of where ski technique um, meets physiology and what we've always found because the, the talks are there as a product but actually they're also a little bit of um, R&D for us um, so it helps us with um, with looking at what are the, the areas where people are blocked. So we we have found, on, I think, on ski courses over the years, I mean, we've been, been in Verbier uh, doing this over 20 years, and the amount of people that come for every week in Verbier, you, you, get, to, you get a real feel for what are the common, uh, most regular um, issues people have in their skiing. And what we're gonna do over the course of the next few weeks, um, we're gonna offer out every, every week uh, a, a coaching session online, which is what this first one is. And we're gonna cover initially six topics. And then if the interest is out there from people, we'll probably evolve it a little bit more and take it a little bit further. Um, and the topics are really basic. I mean, you know, one of the classics in skiing when we start a ski course is that, um, you know, we have a groups, for example, up on Attila, Renate and Verbier. And on the ski off morning, we'll normally notice that nearly 80% of people at least Will, will lack flex at the ankle joint. Um, so many skiers, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this would agree that, you know, it's quite easy to flex your knee joint and your hips, um, but quite often the ankle joint doesn't always match that. Um, so from that perspective, we are, we're gonna, we're gonna look at flex. Um, the other thing we're gonna look at is symmetry. That's gonna be something that we'll do in the next session. Symmetry is a really common one. You know, a lot of people ski asymmetrically with their knees and their feet not in alignment, and it causes issues, especially when people want to go off and do things like ski powder. Um, we're going to look at leg steering range, you know, and rotation, and how you whether you rotate your legs and your hips, or what the relationship is, and an interesting one from that. Um, I've got Rob and Jordan um, with me, sort of online, and and they'll be answering questions with you. But a really interesting one for us is um, I, I tell you, I'll actually show you a, a flyer that we've got. Um, and these flyers we take uh, around on tour with us. I don't know if you can you can see that, um, but it's a it's a flyer that we give people as a scoring uh, test. And Rob can post that for you guys on the Facebook page. Um, but with that test on the leg steering range, um, we usually define for people the difference between their their left turn and their right turn, and we can pull up um, someone's weakness usually with that. And, and I'll give you an example. And most people, when we do a range test, they'll get to about 60 or 70 degrees in one direction. And in the other direction, when they're trying to rotate just their legs, they'll get about 30 or 40 degrees. So, so the most common difference between the left and right um, is usually a 20 or 30 degree difference. And it usually always relates to their weaker turning direction or the turn where they rotate their hips and, and the turn washes out a little bit. The other thing we're going to look at on these coaching sessions online are um, angulation and, and what uh, angles you can make in the body. Um, I can show you just here, but a lot of people, when they try to, to ski, you know, they're trying to make an angle at the middle of the body. And what we've always found is um, when we just tested someone off of snow, usually in the hip area, um, one part of the body is tighter than the other. And it usually correlates 
to when we do a video run of them skiing directly down at us uh, at the video analysis sessions, um, they they have a, a weakness or a lack of angulation in one direction. Um, and again, that's why these sessions might be relevant to a lot of you guys, because we'll, we'll actually um, give people exercises to work on at home, and then they'll actually make changes before they even hit the slopes. Um, the other thing we're going to look at is leg extension, um, and another area for another session is going to be how the core works, not just in terms of your core strength, um, but an interesting thing to think about is, is maintaining um, a certain level of core strength for a longer period of time. If you're going to ski down an itinerary run that's say 30 or 40 seconds of skiing, we want to know that you can activate your core for the whole of that run, not just for the three or four seconds that you thought about activating the core at the start of the run. Um, so that's an interesting thing. We, we quite often give people an exercise for that where they can go away and uh, and work on something, for example, trying to drive your car with your, co your core switched on, but when you have to think of something else, like indicate, look left and right, within like 10, 15 seconds, they forgot about activating their core. So it's not just core strength, it's the duration of core activation. Um, so, so that's six points to cover. We're also gonna include and get you guys involved in giving us things to talk about. So whereas we might present these first six cases or first six subjects to talk about, We've had a lot of people write in over the last two weeks. I mean, you know, Friday the 13th, ironically, was when Verbier had to close. Um, and Verbier did a, you know, the, the, the mountain did a great job because they, they reacted really quickly to, to obviously this disastrous situation that, that everyone's in. Um, and, and we've had to stop skiing. Um, so it was, uh, it was ironic that it was Friday the 13th. But ever since that day, you know, myself and Jordan and Rob and, and, and the rest of the team, um, we've just been communicating with people that are just desperate to do something. So again, that, that's why we've, we've, we brought this about. Um, so keep your questions coming in as we're doing this talk. Like I said, Jordan and Rob are there to answer questions for you. Um, I've got Rob on my, uh, my, my headphone here. So Rob's um, going to be talking to me and, and giving me questions that you guys might be write, writing in as well. Um, so the first subject, we, just, we mentioned it on that, that, uh, the start of this talk, was flex. And... Yeah, you know, it has to be said that over all the years of running this academy and, and, you know, the thousands of people that have come through it, hardly ever do you get someone that comes on a ski course where they're flexing their ankle as much as they are their knee and their hips. It, it's usually always reduced at the ankle joint. And whether or whether or not that is to do with their ski boots, um, yeah, it's always a debatable question. Um, but a lot of people that come on uh, a ski course um, don't always have the correct flex that matches their, uh, their skiing ability. I'm just going to show you, um, this is a, a boot made by one of our partners, Del Bello, okay? I'll bring it a bit closer to the camera. Because um, we're just going to explain a little bit about flex and from, the, from an equipment point of view. Uh, you, yeah, you can see a, a, the boot's called a, a DRS uh, 140. So 140 relates to the flex um, of the boot or the strength of the boot, you could say. And what, that, what that's got to be in line with um, is to sort of correlate with your body weight, um, your skiing ability, and then your style of skiing as well. Some people sort of ski very delicately. Some people ski like, you know, really aggressively and put a lot more pressure through the boots. Um, so that's just something to sort of bear in mind. If, if we're going to ski, um, and this would be something to sort of look at my own sort of skiing or my own boots or, and stuff that the rest of the team use. If I'm going to go and ski really hard on hard pack ice at high speeds, I would probably opt for a stronger boot. But quite often when I'm free skiing, um, I might be skiing in a boot anywhere between a 130 and a 110. Um, in the Del Bello uh, boots that we ski, the Lupos, um, the Lupo Air that I'm using at the moment, really, really great boot, um, super lightweight, and it's a, it's a 110 flex, but it still supports me enough. Um, so that's always been a struggle over the years for us, which, is, which has been a real, um, it's been a real great thing to be able to work with the likes of Del Bello uh, and, and look at how you can sort of give feedback to manufacturers on the strengths and the flexibility of boots. Um, so, so we look at it from the point of view of, you can see this board here actually, it's probably the best way to describe it. We use this three-way lineage always when we're coaching um, and it looks at technique, biomechanics and equipment. Um, and the equipment is so important to get it, to get it right, to get it working. Um, and Rob's just said someone's got a question, so do you want to fire that to me Rob? Okay, so that's a question Rob's just given me from Catherine that's just written in to, to, to talk about her, her, her flexibility in her ankle joint 
um, and she's been told this uh, by a physio um, and someone she's worked with, that, that she hasn't got enough flexibility to match the flex that's needed uh, to ski. And, and that's a really interesting point. So on that one, uh, Catherine, we'll answer that directly. That comes down here to the biomechanics side and the equipment side. And this is a really important point to get across, which is why this talk will be a, be a benefit to you guys. Um, what we do, we, we do a job, obviously on the mountain, where we work with people's ski technique, but perhaps even a more important job than what we do is looking at the equipment. Because as good, however good your instructor might be, you might have the best instructor in the world, but if you have a ski boot that's too stiff or too soft, um, or as Catherine just mentioned there, if you have a, a lack of ankle flex. So a, a lack of ankle flex, if I'm standing here, um, and this is quite an important point to get across to you, uh, we, you, you see the ruler here we've got, it's like a, a, just a typical 30 centimetre ruler. Um, we work a lot with people uh, to measure the range of flex. So if I was to stand up here, and I'll, I'll show you the test sideways on, we, we measure from the hip down the ruler to see how far someone can go to get the flex in that lower leg. So you can see, obviously, I, I'm in ski boots all the time. Um, my, my main focus is obviously to make flexibility. Um, that drop test for me is usually around 25 centimetres. And what's really interesting, when um, myself and Fiona and Jordan and Rob and a, a few other members from the team were at the ski show um, in London in October, we probably got through about 500 people doing these drop tests. And the, the, the really sort of worrying point, and this will relate to what you're talking about, Catherine, um, we had scores of three, four, five, six centimetres, single figure scores of people that when they went to show us what flex they had in the ankle, they stood up straight and flexed down to angles like this and were blocked after. And a lot of it came down to simply being tight in the calf muscles. Some of it was uh, stuff that wasn't really our department. It was more like the department of isokinetic or, or physio verbier or, or, or wherever, um, whatever it might be, where people have to go and actually get a physio to do some work with them. But quite often, um, it's just simply a matter of exercising the, the joint and, and actually stretching your calves, uh, the upper and lower part of your calves, with, with a really simple um, stretch exercise. Um, but that, that's quite an interesting one. So on that, you can do this at home or, or do this with your partner. On this, um, on this first test, just on here, um, you can see that on the drop test, and like I said, Rob will print this out, or send it to you guys. Um, you can measure uh, on that the, the distance that you drop. So just to give you an example how to do it properly, um, if you can see me at the corner here. So if you were to go up against the wall, um, you can't see my feet, but the key to doing this exercise and getting it correct is putting a ruler up against the side and then having your heels on the ground. And as you go down the wall and start your flex, what will happen most of the time, and when I say most, it's like 99% of the time, most people will have one heel that lifts off the ground before the other. So that's a really important part of this test. When you do this at home, work on your drop test, see how far you can slide your hips down the wall, and remember to keep your shoulders and your hips in contact with the wall, and your heels should also be touching the wall. And as you come down, you'll find that you'll get to a point where it'll stop. Um, the national average, and this is really important, the national average for this drop test is 10 centimetres. And that is of, of us at the moment, we've probably got through quite a few thousand people, um, especially with having events like the ski show and you work yourself through hundreds, but also on the tour over the last five years, you know, we've, we've got through thousands of people. That's been our average, but a lot of people fall beneath that and they get single figure scores. And the single figure scores are the ones we worry about because... And this is a really important point to put across there. Um, if you're skiing, um, and this is obviously an obvious difference between skiing and golf, super technical sports, but from a skiing point of view, you can sometimes be skiing where the light, you know, the visibility gets a bit flat, um, you know, where there's a, a, a slight sort of shadows and you can't quite see uh, what the terrain's like. And quite often you can hit um, a, a wall that you're not expecting, uh, a sudden shock. And if you're in, in the middle position, over your skis and you hit that shock, you can sometimes get a, a really aggressive forward flex that will flex that boot to quite a degree just to take the shock. But if, you're, if your uh, drop test is in single figures, you know, and your lower leg can only get to that sort of angle forwards, but the flex of the boot goes beyond that, you're obviously gonna 
stand a risk of having a, an injury or some stress to the back of the lower leg. Um, and, and that's something that can quite often happen in skiing. People tear their calves, um, you know, and, and they've hit something suddenly and they just didn't have that flex or range. So one of the things that we, we would recommend to do um, is simply, and, and this is interesting because we've worked through, um, we've worked through uh, uh, ski courses with people that have started on the, um, on the first day and we know that that person that we've started with on the video analysis session, we know that by the Friday, as much as we're going to give them things to work on with their technique, you know, right across the board. Hey, Rob, I've got you. Um, so that area of, uh, of ski technique is not something that we can fix on a five-day course. So if someone turns up on a, on a Sunday on a ski course with super tight calves, it would kind of be... Um, wrong for us to try and put them through a very rapid stretching sort of program to try and get you know work done into the calves whether it's sort of using a foam roller um, seeing a physio or, or doing stretching themselves it usually takes quite a few weeks um, so so quite often what we'll get people to do um, who rock up on it is, is simply put the ski boots on and stand up in their ski boots and just literally flex into the boot. So you've got two, ang two ways of looking at it. One is people that don't actually have the flexibility um, in, the, in, the, in their calf. So from that point of view, you, you work on a, a much more elongated program of calf stretching. Now, now, if you go online right now and just, you know, on YouTube, type in uh, calf stretching, you're going to find some really reputable physios that will take you through some really good programs online. Um, and if you're in those single figure scores, it's not a bad idea to actually go and have a consultation with a physio, to go and actually have a look at what, what could be causing you to have a, a low uh, range in the drop test. Um, the drop test, just if you're not sure about it, it's on our website um, under a page. Again, Rob will post a page from our website that will give you an idea of, of how to do this exercise properly. And there's a video that actually backs it up. Um, it's something that we edited a couple of years ago that is purely about ankle flex. And the video is about three or four minutes. But on that video, you'll get a lot of content that you can sort of, you can keep and use. Um, it's, it's not a bad thing. I mean, that's the other reason we wanted to do this talk because some of our content gets buried and people sort of forget to look at it and forget to find it. And just to do this webinar is a, is a bit of a refreshment of the content that sits embedded in the website and sometimes hidden. So that's a video that, you know, is, is obviously out there. It's free content um, and you can use that to, to try and develop things at home. Um, so the, the two ways to look at it is from a more of a kind of a medical physio point of view, definitely check if your drop test is in the single figures um, with a professional you know, a physio that, that might be able to help you. If you're, uh, if you're feeling okay in the drop test and you're getting sort of, you know, towards 10 centimeters and beyond, a really good thing to do is just to put your ski boots on and work on it. Because when you, um, one of the things we found over the, over the years, when you put a ski boot on, you know, ski boots, the, the boots are made these days, the, the technological advancements in ski boots is amazing. But at the end of the day, it's not like your walking boot. Um, it's a really good idea to put your ski boot on and get some practice and exercise and muscle memory of, of flexing in your boot. You know, we, we've talked a lot with people um, who have gone on a ski week, clips on their skis on a Sunday morning, and just expect that their flex in their ankle is going to work like it does in their knee and the hip, and, and, it, and it doesn't most of the time. Um, if you prepped yourself, and for example, today, after this session is over, and you've got your ski boots at home, pop your ski boots on and just test it. And just test the flex of the boot to make sure you can comfortably flex. The way you do that is to put one ski boot on at a time and stand on it, lift your other leg up and drive your body weight down through the boot and try to keep your body weight in the middle of the boot. Even, I mean, I did a remote coaching session with somebody in February and even just looking at it, when this person put their ski boot on at home and I was doing this like I am to you guys now, um, I noticed that they were flexing and the hip was dropping back at home. And what we want you guys to have a think about, if you're going to, between now and when we next do a webinar, if you're going to think about standing up on one leg, trying to drive your hip down through the middle of the boot, you want that to become so natural and, and actually quite easy to do that you get a really nice bit of rebound and you've just worked the flexing mechanism in the ankle. So... That, that's why we wanted to do this, is to give people something to work on. Going back to the point on the ski course, 
um, the person sometimes that doesn't have that flex will give them an exercise to try and drive up the muscle memory way more than they would do that for example as i said when you clip into your ski boots on a sunday morning and take them off on the friday you might have never properly flex the ankle joint how we might have wanted you to that was in relation to your knee and your hip so from that perspective um you know up in the game of muscle memory can be about two or three weeks before you go away putting the ski boot on and just driving into the boot and you could make up so much time you could make up weeks and weeks and weeks of ski um ski time but just by doing something at home uh, that drove up that, that repetition and exercise. So that's a, that's a big thing for us that, that really works it. Now, we, we've sort of talked about and covered equipment, um, and we've looked at biomechanics there, and, and as Catherine was writing in about, we talked about how the calf isn't always stretched. You know, a lot of people as well that ski with us, they, they spend a lot of the time in the, sitting down at a desk, and then they come out and expect the functionality to work, and, and it just doesn't always. So, um, so that's a, a big area to look at. We haven't talked very much about the technique side of things, but, but what we opened it with was to explaining that a lot of people when they go skiing, they just usually lack a little bit of that flex mechanism. So what we do from a technique point of view is give exercises. Exercises that you can see, um, Rob's gonna feed those exercises to you now um, with that page that has the video on it. And the exercises on snow, we, we do a lot of ankle flex repetition, um, we can do sometimes, you know, work to try and get people to, to get some pedaling and some, you know, powering the legs to make flex pattern work left and right. And eventually, once you honed in on someone's um, awareness, it does change on the snow. But there's a whole sort of uh, variety of exercises. That's the one thing we obviously can't do at the moment. You know, the, the, the slopes are closed, the indoor snow domes are closed, um, so we can't do the skiing. But as I said before at the start of the talk and the reason behind the talk and, and focusing on the biomechanics, there's so much you can do at home uh, that can make your skiing change. I'm going to give you an example of that. When me and, um, when me and Rob were on our tour, quite a few people um, who had worked on our tour at the start of October, it was when we went up to Scotland and worked our way down the UK, um, they, they went away with what they'd learned on the, uh, on the lecture or the evening lecture. But what they did at the indoor snow domes they were skiing at, they, they started videoing their skiing and sending the videos in to us. Um, and we were actually seeing the changes take place. And interestingly, that was without us coaching them. They, they, they were kind of fixing their skiing themselves. So from that perspective, I mean, that's a, it's, it's a really interesting game. I remember one instructor at one of the indoor snow domes um, went away and just worked on something where he found the block in one of his ankles, um, did the drop test, one of the heels lifted. What was really interesting is when he held the ruler up, and he slid down the wall to do his first drop test, one heel lifted on the left side at around five or six centimeters, and then he carried on doing his drop test on the other leg, he went down to 16 centimeters. So just by a really simple identification tool, um, he found that his left ankle wasn't flexing as much because his calf was really tight. Um, he balanced it out, he actually did go and see a physio, and when he, I mean, it took him about three weeks, but he got himself almost even. It was about 14 centimeters, 16 centimeters. But it was good enough with the change that he made in the, in the, the stretching of the right car, uh, left calf that it really changed his technique. And what he was struggling with, because he was working his way through his instructor levels, every time he was turning towards the right, his body weight was going back and he wasn't projecting how he wanted to forward at the start of the turn. He couldn't because he was actually blocked down at the base. Um, and that's an example of how, you know, this ski technique lab uh, that we developed can actually really help you guys make the changes yourself um, without booking a lesson. You know, effectively, that's, that's how, how this can work for you. Um, so that's, that's an example of what this session will, will do for you. Um, we're going to stay online and, and we'll be here to answer any questions that you guys might have. And as I said before, if you, you check in with the Facebook page, um, I know Rob's going to post that, uh, that flyer, the Ski Technique Lab flyer, so you can print it out at home and work through that yourself. Um, and then we'll also post a video uh, that was specifically about ankle flex. Um, and and it, we'll, we'll get that posted for you too. So sort of, you know, myself, Jordan and Rob are going to be here to sort of help you with any of this. Um, we'll come back uh, in a few days and we'll do uh, the next uh, session. And the next session will be about symmetry and alignment. Uh, and it'll be about 
given some exercises, you know, to do with switching on some specific muscle groups, um, looking at your ski boots, is your footbed um, made correctly to support you? Does it does it work for your boot? Have your as your upper cuff been adjusted for your, your leg alignment? Um, and then exercises, you know, things that you can you can think about in your skin that can work for that as well. Um, session after that, just to give you a bit of an insight, um, you can see this board here. Um, that's our range test board, and it's where we measure the inner rotation of your outside leg, like your downhill, some people call it, but it's technically your outside leg, um, and how it can rotate in to finish your turns off. Um, if you've ever been told uh, by your instructor to um, finish your turn off, especially in one direction, that'll make a lot of relevance to you. Um, okay, guys, well, that, that is the end of our, our first session. Um, we hope it's given you something to, to think about or to at least work on at home. Um, and if, if there are any bits that you didn't quite catch, um, please do write in. Um, we're also going to be opening this session up uh, for people to, um, uh, to send in videos. And we may well be looking at your video that you send in on one of the next sessions, because um, I know a lot of people have been doing that as well. Um, but thanks a lot for tuning in. We hope it's given you something to think about. That was the idea of this. Um, for those of you that are, are gagging to get out there on the mountain and ski, you know, there are things you can be doing at home. Um, but thanks for your time, guys. 